Yep. Next up, we got a video by The Good Rant about David Lucas called The Worst Year of His Career. I've been paying attention to David Lucas for the last, like, two years, year and a half or so, and I can say this last 12 months has definitely been not the best for him. He's gotten a few different controversies and a few different cringe moments at several different points. Several different points. On Kill Tony, on Matan. He's just been fucking up this last year, so let's see what the good rant got to say about it. My jokes are very cerebral, so if you come to my show... That statement has gone to fire, fi fire back on him so hard on all these... Uh, all, all these channels that go over podcast stuff, all like cringe podcast stuff. That that statement alone has gone back to bite him in the ass so hard. I might say a lot of crazy, shit, but on your drive home, you're gonna be thinking a lot. I'm a I'm a very calculated and very cerebral person. Scratch the ass so you can smell. Literally, smell it. perfect, perfect example. Oh my god, god damn it, good job. <laughs> perfect fucking example. <laughs> Cerebral. Looking back, I'm gonna leave you show, When David Lewis was butt. inducted into the Kill Tony Hall <laughs> of Fame, he probably thought for him 2024 was gonna be a great year. And even though the year isn't quite over, I think we can all agree that it's not looking good. Almost any time there's a video that includes him, he's getting roasted in the comments, yeah. and not in a friendly way. This includes his own channel. The public opinion is that he's not only not liked, but due to some of the things he said or done this past year, people have lost lost a lot of respect for him. The consensus seems to be that he's not that funny and doesn't deserve the level of fame that he's at. You can say what you want about mean comments, but with enough traction, they can slowly damage a comedian's career. Just ask this guy. So what ha, happened truth. a year ago, when he would make an appearance on Kill Tony, it seemed like it was a refreshing, familiar face, but those days are gone. Now, Facts. there's been a few things that have gone wrong for him this past year. The first being- The last like four or five times he's been on Kill Tony have all been ba essentially the comedian that the comedian that's a guest turning back and making the best moment out of flaming the shit out of David Lucas the George Floyd joke you want to show them the reason George Floyd got his neck nailed on <laughs> Don't ooh at that joke. It's just a joke, man. I would have never kneeled on George Floyd's neck. <laughs> I would have shot that nigga. That was... <laughs> this picked up trash. That is unarguably a good joke. Unarguably, that joke is fucking fire. <laughs> Action and like expected, received a heap of backlash, which I'm sure he was actually. But guess what? See. That was he over a year ago. That this was his Shane Gillis. It's SNL just this last year, man. This last moment. year he's been fucking up. This would be a canceling up. that helped to propel his career. He doubled down on not apologizing and made podcast appearances where he explained that he would never apologize for any joke. So if you take me serious, that's on you. I'm a comedian, and I'm on the spectrum. <laughs> I have Aspergers. I don't know limits. If I offended y'all on an individual level, I do apologize, but I'm not apologizing for the joke. Because then wh where does it stop? So the moment I apologize for a George Floyd joke, now I gotta apologize for every other joke. It actually sounds like he's apologizing in one sentence, but then saying he's not apologizing, it's like he's trying to appeal to both sides. If he offended you as an individual by making that joke, then he's sorry, but he's not sorry for the joke. That's like punching someone in the face and saying, if you were physically hurt by that, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry for punching you in the face. My joke. Yeah, no, that still makes sense. That, that, that does make sense. I give him that. <laughs> so if you come to my show, I might say a lot of crazy shit. That makes shit, sense to me. But on your drive home, you're going to be thinking a lot. I'm a, I'm a very calculated and very cerebral person. Saying that his comedy is cerebral is likely the best joke he's ever said. If Thanks. you've seen any of his comedy or roasting, you know what I'm talking about. Even if you look at the George Floyd joke, it's not exactly clever. So there wasn't much defense for it, but a lot of people appreciated the fact that he was sticking to his guns, even if they didn't find the joke funny. We've all seen what happens when comics don't give in to the backlash. In the end, for them, it usually turns out well, except he didn't stick to his guns. Shortly after this interview, he buckled under the pressure and gave an apology. Uh, my intention was to never cause harm to his family or make them revisit a moment that happened a few years ago. Uh, I'm a father, so I get it. I understand how his kids feel. I've spoken 
to his whole family. And um, we've came, uh, you know, to an understanding as to how to move forward from this. And uh, just want to apologize to his kids and everybody who was close to him. This left him looking pretty stupid and it pissed off a lot of his fans who left a lot of negative comments on his apology video, which he quickly took down from his account. So this was an L. But to try and capitalize off the exposure, a month later his comedy special was released and he gave it this cringy name, Uncancelable. The name feels like he's trying to grab onto the cancel culture hype from five years ago. The special itself I thought was pretty bad and so did a lot of people. I mean, just reading the- I like the first half. The first half was pretty funny. Comments, he got roasted a lot, which I'm sure he can at least appreciate being such a great roast comic. Now, speaking of roasting, this is where 2024 got even worse for him. At this point, it's April. He's thinking, okay, my special kind of flopped and my big cancel moment didn't go as well as I thought, but at least I have killed Tony. This is the place where he's always welcome to bless the audience with his supreme roasting. According to Hinchcliffe, David is just an absolute beast. These old timers do not want any of what Dave Lucas is cooking. He's gonna make them look stupid. At least that's what Tony would have us believe. But on this day, David Lucas picked the wrong one. Unfortunately, yeah. I can't play all of it because Kill Tony is ruthless with their copyright, but I'll play the best parts to give you a good idea of what happened. Harlan Williams, you look like Tyler Perry presents Back to the Future. Huh? <laughs> Marty, in exactly 60 seconds, this Cadillac is gonna go. <laughs> well, at least I'm not back to the fucking buffet. How about that? <laughs> Judging by your hair, you had an audition for Elvis, the stage play. <laughs> oh, that well, that good. didn't go too well. <laughs> 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 Judging by your hair, the children of the corn have diarrhea. <laughs> oh, look at your fucking hair. It looks like Predator sent his kid to Jenny Craig. <laughs> <laughs> That was entertaining, but at David's expense. This was another L for Lucas, and in front of his own crowd. He's now getting roasted on social media, and his safe haven at the mothership now seems a little unsafe, thanks to Harlan, making him look like he has no business roasting. He made Lucas look like an amateur compared to him, but it's okay. It's a new day, which is what Dave Lucas is thinking a few weeks later from the YouTube theater. A much bigger stage, maybe before it just wasn't his night, but this will be different. He's got unfinished business with Harlan, this I'll take about Kill Tony when they have motherfuckers like this nigga. I feel like the more famous they are, the less interesting the episode is because the less shit that they're willing to say because they don't want their careers fucked up. <laughs> like, we have motherfuckers like Harlan. They don't really care. They already made their money. They're old. They don't... They'll say whatever the fuck they want to say. <laughs> There's no way he's going to let this old, washed-up comedian humiliate him on Kill Tony for a second time. Harlan, you look like Joe Biden's spike person, spokesperson. Nigga, fuck, I fucked that joke Yeah, up. you fucked yep. it up bad. God damn. You fucked it up real bad, my guy. Kinda and like I that. mean my fucking guy. How about all fucking guys? <laughs> <laughs> I thought this guy had a tattoo of the Monster Energy Drink logo on his stomach. It turned out to be his fucking stretch mark. Damn. <laughs> damn. You got a tattoo of your medicine schedule, nigga. Get your motherfucking... Shit. Shouldn't you be in fucking Columbia or fucking down in uh, fucking Denver stomping dinosaur footprints into a river? <laughs> the only guy I know, everyone else in the country has Lyme disease. This has got key Lyme pie disease. <laughs> smoke this dumb ass. Pack them out. This old bitch. You're my bitch tonight. How about that? Let's pack this ass up. Pack this ass right up. Now. I am cooking and you're just pissed off. I didn't actually bring you some food. <laughs> I didn't ask you to sit down, but you're going to fall through the stage any second. He's <laughs> buckle any further, it's going to be the McDonald's arches. <laughs> oh, fuck. You got to leave this old nigga alone. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah, yeah, I don't know why you wanted to smoke so for the second time after losing. The first time. Humiliation is now a feeling he's starting to get used to. The reason he's up there is so we can see some good roasting, which we did see, just not from him. Now, he said one thing during this humiliating time on stage that I thought was interesting. So he roasts like me, bro. That's why I can't roast this nigga. You can't. It's like the same, the way I roast, it's like roasting myself. We say crazy shit. Damn it! Fuck you, Harlan! You just keep saying roast, eventually one will appear. <laughs> Sometimes when traumatic events happen, the victim builds a warped reality in their head to deal with the trauma. So David has convinced himself that Harlan is roasting like him. 
That's why he's so good, because he's doing what David does. Now, of course, we all know that that's delusion, but it will likely take a while for David to figure that out. Hopefully for his sake, that's the last time he tries it with Harland. And I think this is a long time coming. If you've been watching David for more than a few months, you almost know the jokes that he's going to make, especially when it comes to roasting Tony. It's always Tony's booty hole this, booty hole that. And Tony would roast him back with jokes that were actually funny and hit hard. And you could tell Tony didn't write his jokes beforehand because they're direct responses to what David just said. It's much better than something random like Tony's so gay he does blank. Tony, you look like a gay puffer fish. Oh my God. It's true. If I bite your booty, I bet you blow up, nigga. You know <laughs> oh my God, would I blow up like you? <laughs> David seems like he can write his jokes beforehand, and maybe he does, and they're still not that good. However, with Tony's responses, you can tell that he's coming up with those in real time. I think the viewers are at the point where they can no longer be fooled into thinking that David Lucas is a great roaster, which is really his comedic identity. So public opinion is just going downhill for David. And it gets worse with this podcast interview from Matan, yeah. where he exposed himself for more- This one, this, this made him look like a fucking clown. This made David Lucas look like an absolute clown, bro. Multiple things. One, not being able to take trolling very well. What about, bro? What are you talking about? Because oh, I thought you were trying to. You on some weird I shit. You a predator? I'm not a predator. No, for sure. Skip the question, bro. We ain't even finna entertain that bullshit you're talking about right now. Because I got children, and that's a very sensitive topic. Postage? Yeah. Two, having the sense of humor of a ten-year-old. I'm gonna put my hand in my ass and make you smell it, bitch. Come here, nigga. Put that shit in your face, dog. <laughs> you want to smell it, nigga? No, <laughs> I'll make him smell it. Oh, let's see if your ass talk now, man. I bet you say, God damn, I put that shit up under that Listen, dope. We need to get back to the podcast. That, right? Hey, that t-shirt ain't going to cover it up, bro. You still going to smell this ass. I ain't took no shower, and I'm straight off a of plane. Boy, this shit. Scratch the ass so you can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> he touched his mouth with it. <laughs> Scratch the ass so you can smell it. <laughs> and then displays what a disgusting slob he is. Oh, and yeah. shortly rubs that same hand all over his face. He's rubbing it in his eyes. It's gross. Then lastly, he showed his creepy side by trying to get Matan to undress and randomly bringing up adult content on his phone to show Matan, who's supposedly 17, which David knows. Exactly. Let me see it. Take it off. I can't. Let me see. Not on camera. Take it off. No, it's not allowed. <laughs> Be careful. I have a weapon on me. I don't give a fuck about no weapon. What you think about this? I, why are you showing me that? That's extremely weird. Show that to him. What you think about that? That's the best of both worlds. David once again taking a big fat <laughs> L, no pun intended. I guess since he doesn't like being trolled, he purposely just wanted to derail the show, which is pretty sad because he's a comedian and a self-labeled prolific roast comic. He should be able to deal with a 17-year-old troll with ease. Thanks. Mark Norman did the same podcast some weeks later and showed exactly how a professional comedian should handle themselves in an awkward setting like this. So just to recap, George Floyd joke, which backfires, in which he's forced to apologize, then it's complete humiliation by Harlan, not once, but twice. And lastly, exposing himself for being a childish, gross, and creepy slob on a podcast. So maybe 2025 is going to be a better year for him. But let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed. Damn. I feel like there was more. I feel, I feel, I feel like there's a little bit more that he did as well. But that pretty well sums it up. That pretty well sums it up enough. Well, shit. W motherfucking the good rent. Link in the description. Check him out. Check him out. You can't come around my gang. You ain't got no fucking motion. Motion, 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 motion. You ain't got no fucking motion. Motion, 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 motion.